Hello, welcome to Nina's Knots Crochet. I'm Lenann. If you're new here, hey, thanks for stopping by and checking out my channel. My channel, well, it's all about crochet. A little bit about knitting, a lot about yarn, but mostly it's about my journey and my life through this fantastic yarny community. Returning subscribers, thanks so much for coming back, spending a little bit of your Friday with me. Yay, it's the weekend. Um, hope everybody had a great week. Um, I did, I had a good week. Now I'm ready for the weekend, although here in Florida, it's going to be a scorcher this weekend. Like heat warnings and heat indices in the hundreds. Um, it's a little early in the year for that, I think. I mean, this is just the beginning of June. Um, so I see pool time and locking ourselves in our bedroom. Our air conditioner is old and it doesn't keep up with the whole house. So on days when it's really hot, Tom and I lock ourselves in our bedroom with our room air conditioner and just hang out and watch TV and I'll sit in my chair and crochet and do whatever. But it's the only way to keep cool when the heat air conditioner doesn't keep up with the whole house because it's too hot. Usually that's reserved for like late July and August, not the beginning of June. Anyway, so today um, I only have one baggy blanket. I know, slacker, right? But I had a lot going on this week. But I did get one baggy blanket done. And I'm going to talk about the Omi hooks. Um, I you know, mentioned it the other day in my video and I had a lot of people questioning me about them. So I'll show you my Omi collection and give you a little review on those. Um, and then I have a neglected project that I need to at least show you the yarn. Um, and we'll go over that in a minute. So that's Friday and then whatever else comes out of my head, you know, sometimes I squirrel. So let's start with, um, let's start with a baggy blanket. Um, if you don't know what I mean by a baggy blanket, um, check out the videos that are listed in my description box below. Um, most of you do know last year I was collecting squares for Camp Baggy Creek with uh, Nancy and uh, from She's Got Yarn 2 and Lynette Charm Grammy Crochet and Billy the Crafty Floridian and this coming August will be our third annual drive. So I am still working my way through all of the squares from last year and I consolidated them. I had like 12 laundry baskets. I consolidated them down to two 48 gallon totes and a big chewy box and three uh, laundry baskets. I'm going to be going through these forever, you guys, but that's okay. I, I don't have a problem with this. It's just um, I got a little more of a handle on the organization of them. So I'm it, it's getting there. I still have a lot to go as far as getting them organized the way I want, but at least now I have them in containers that are contained and the bed is cleared off for the most part. I cleared it off and then I started putting more stuff back on it. All my whip bags ended up on there. So I'm getting there. My, my daughter and her family are coming at the end of June and I need to have this room ready for people to sleep in not just my yarn and it's been a process hopefully i'll have it done by the time they get here uh like the 30th of june anyway so anyway see i told you i'd squirrel today it it's 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 a twirly day um so anyway but baggy creek um the blankets um if you want to make a blanket now it doesn't have to be a granny square blanket it can be any blanket you want um, they need to be 35 to 40 inches wide, 40 to 50 inches long. That sweet spot is a 40 by 40 square. You can knit, you can crochet, you can weave. They like the knit and crochet. Those are the ones that they will give to the kids to take home as long as they fit those parameters. Like I said, they don't have to be, uh, granny squares. You can do corner to corner. You can do chevron. You could do whatever blanket you want as long as it fits their measurements. So uh, Camp Baggy Creek, if you don't know, 
like I said, I have several videos listed in my description box below. They're just, they're a camp for kids with um, serious to chronic illnesses. Uh, think things like uh, sickle cell anemia, um, epilepsy, uh, cystic fibrosis, things where they can't just go out without having some kind of medical intervention. They provide a well-trained staff of medical professionals who volunteer their time so these kids can come to camp and be a kid instead of a kid with some disease. Um, and they get to do talent shows and fish and swim and do all the things that you would do if you go to camp that these kids can't do if they go to a normal a, a camp with kids who aren't ill. I hate to use the word normal because, you know, who's to decide what's normal? Anyway, so that is what I'm doing. This baggy blanket that I did, um, I did it a little differently and it kind it fits the 40 to 40. It is, for, uh, it's a square 40 by 40. Um, and what I did was I took four squares of the five by five squares and I turned them into a 10 by 10 square. And then I went four across and four down to get you the 40. So I couldn't put a really big border on it, but I think I use up more squares this way and it fits the 40 by 40 parameters. Um, like I said, I could only do, you know, a single crochet around, otherwise it would be too big, uh, in one direction. But I love how this one turned out with the purples and the blues and some grays and look at that pretty little flower. And let's see where it is. And then we have, our heart square, which is blue with a white heart. So I really, really love the way that this one turned out. Um, I think this, I might use this uh, method for a while um, to make some that are at the 40 by 40. The ones that I have been doing are somewhere between like 37 to 42. They're more of a rectangle where this one comes out more like a square. So I think I'm gonna start doing some of these for a while. Uh, just because I kind of got bored doing that one. I've done a lot of them that way. So just to kind of zhuzh it up, give myself, you know, a little mental break, I'm going to be making them this way by making squares into squares and then using them to make the blanket. So baggy blanket for this week. And I really like, I love that color combination with the blues and the, like the grayish blue and the purple with the white. I think it just turned out really pretty. So Okay, that's it. Uh, let's talk hooks, shall we? These are my, I want to separate out. These are what's left of my Omi hooks. And I love, love, love these hooks. Now these you can get on Amazon. Um, I am not affiliated with Amazon, nor am I affiliated with Omi. Um, I just really, really, really like these hooks. The reason I like them so much is the pointed head. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. Look at the point on that head. It makes it so much easier to get into your stitches, especially if you're using fine, like this is my number four and I love it because when you're using thin yarn and you're trying to get into a stitch, this point is fabulous. This, is my absolute favorite hook. Does that not remind you of the beach with the, it, it's, I think this is supposed to look like cork or wood and then it has the acrylic on the top, but it just, I don't know, it just reminds me of the beach and I love it. This one is a six and a half. I broke my four and they are out of stock on my fours and I'm on the waiting list to get a new one. This is a six and a half. Um, this is one of my other favorites. This is a six and this is a six. Why I have two sixes and a six and a half, I don't know. I have a five and a half and my four. So I need to get a four and a half and a five um, of these, but they, they always seem to be out of stock. That ought to tell you something. When they're out of stock of common size, that means people are using them and liking them. The other thing that I really like about, here are my, furls and I do like my furls. Now they, 
in comparison, look how rounded that head is. See this, this one's my four and a half. Let me grab my, I don't have a four and a half. I'm just gonna grab my four. But you can see the difference in the head size, in the head pointiness. Not that the furls are bad. I like the furls, but you can feel a difference. I have my scale right here. Let's see, is it zeroed out? No, not milliliters. I don't want milliliters. Ounces. Okay, so I'm going to put my furls on here. And it's 0 0.7 ounces. Let's see how much the Omi hook weighs. 0 0.5 ounces. I know it doesn't sound like a much, but you can feel the difference in your hand. The other reason I really like this and why I like furls. Furls, it, to me, it's the weight is right here where it seems like the Omi is distributed throughout the whole hook where it seems like this one's kind of weighted right here in the middle. But for both of them, see how far out it sticks on my hand? I have a big hand and I know a lot of you are clover people and don't get me wrong, cl these clover amours, they're nice hooks. I like the metal on them. I do like them, but they're so short that they hit me right here every time when I'm trying to crochet and it ends up rubbing my hand and y'all know I have RA, my joints aren't the best to begin with. So for me to have that extra space on the end helps so much that it doesn't give me the fatigue that the, uh, clover amours do. The um, dots hooks, again, they're a little bit longer so that I can see the difference and how long. I mean, when you've got that extra on the end, it just helps with the hand fatigue. That's why as much as I do like these, these do work well, the, the uh, Clover Amores, they're just too short for my hand. And yes, I know I could put a pencil grip on the end and who has time for that? Not me. Not when I can grab my Omi or my dots or my furls and know that it's gonna big, fit my big fluffy hand um, and, and be comfortable. But I gotta tell you, you guys, um, the only hooks run, I want to say $11.99 compared to what, $22, $23 sometimes for the furls hooks. I'll, I don't think I'll ever buy another furls hooks. I am converted to an Omi hook just because I love the shape, the ergonomic shape of them. I love the long throat. I like the pointy end and I love the feel of them in my hand. I am, I'm going to start collecting all of the pretties. Oh, that one's my furls. I'm going to start collecting all of the pretties because they do. I mean, look, the rainbow sparkle and they have these in different colors with the, the white with the swirls. I just like the black and white. And then you got the blue swirl. And I just, this, I mean, this is, this one's a work of art. It is my absolute favorite. Look at that, how pretty that is. I need a four and a half in this one. Because I already have my four in my rainbow. But I love these hooks, you guys. So that is why I am an Omi girl. Now, go ahead and check them out on Amazon. Um, like I said, a lot of sizes are currently out of stock, but they come back in really fast. So put it, you know, the notification, you know, notify me when it comes in and grab yourself some of those because get your favorite size first to make sure it's something that you want. I wish they sold them in sets, but I have not seen them in sets. They only sell them individually. But like I said, I am on the hunt 
for a four or a four and a half in this version because it's so pretty. But anyway, okay, so that is hooks. You know, if you guys have any questions, shoot me an email, uh, leave me a comment. I'll see if I can answer your questions. Like I said, I'm not affiliated with them. I don't know anything about their company or about them. I just know what I like. And I thought I would share that with you. Lastly, today, um, you probably have forgotten because I haven't talked about it since January. The uh, Jimmy Beans Wool Shawl Monthly Club that I started this year because they're using hedgehog fibers and a really beautiful pattern. Well, gang, I have frogged it back because I did something wrong with the second part of January and I was not getting, a, and it says right in the pattern, be real conscious of stitch count. Well, I was doing something wrong and I frogged this whole thing back and started over on it the other day. So I got section one done and my stitch count is right. I started section two and I had to send away when I was doing it originally, I had to send for some more yarn because I was, I was running out. Well, I have a feeling I was running out because I was doing it wrong not because of anything the pattern is. So I ended up getting two of this month because this is all I had left of the original first color. So now here's the second color for January. And I think the color was like churro. I can't remember what the first color's name was. Yeah, one of them is called churro. I think this is the one that's called churro. And I don't remember what this color was called. So anyway, that's January's colors. And I think I've shown you February's colors, which are very similar. I'm doing the colorway called Mellow. And this, this colorway is, gosh darn it, these little tiny papers are teeny tiny. Uh, matchstick is this one which was really, really pretty, a really pretty variegated. And this colorway Oh, come on. It's called Silence. And it's just like a straw color. It's really pretty. I really like it. It's kind of, a, a, it's got a yellow tint to it. Um, so March colors came <laughs> and they're very gray. Aren't those pretty? And this color is coastal. Yeah, I can see that. And this colorway is, there's no paper in there. Huh. There's no paper in here to tell me what the name of this color is. I'll have to get on their website. The website will tell me. So anyway, that's March. Here's April. Ooh, those are like lilac colors. Ooh, all right. The variegated is called Sea Glass. And look how pretty that is with a pop of that lime in there. So pretty with the purples and the mint. So pretty. I love that. And then this color. It's kind of got a purple tint to it, to the gray. Now the, the overall color theme is called mellow. Um, they had two to choose from mellow and vibrant. I went with mellow because it is more my style. And this is called faux like enemy, F-O-E, foe. 
and I like that. It's kind of a, a, a purpley tint gray, and I think those are pretty together. This is gonna be a pretty shawl once I figure it out. And then May came. Oh my, look at those. Oh yeah, I like this. This color is called Ziggy. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I wonder where they come up with the names. And these are all hedgehog fibers, you guys. Um, made in, I want to say, Ireland? That will tell me on this little piece of paper. Uh, and this color is called Siren. Yeah, this is the 2024 Hedgehog Fiber Shaw Club Mellow Colorway. The, the shaw is called Oh So Fine, 100% merino wool, and you get 90 yards in each of these little balls. So you get 180 yards every month, plus the pattern and, you know, all the help that you need, which obviously I need because I did something wrong, but they have this card and you can join, um, they have a Malabrigo club, a blanket club, the Shaw club, and an accessories club. Um, once you have the pattern in your account on Jimmy Bean's Wool, it's there forever. You can go back and get it and download it. They have video tutorials, which obviously I'm going to need. And customer service so far for me, Anytime I've had to contact them at Jimmy Beans, they've been phenomenal. I haven't had any problems with them. Like I said, I was running short on yarn. I sent them an email and three days later I had a new little ball of yarn so that I would have enough. Because it says at the end of the instructions, save your leftovers, you're going to need it in another part of the shawl. So I was like, there's no way I could barely finish the section. Well, come to find out, it's probably me and not them. But I do appreciate them sending me, at no cost, the additional yarn. I really do. I, I mean, that's great customer service right there. So anyway, that's the Jimmy Bean Wolves Club. Um, I'm going to work on this um, a little bit this weekend. Um, like I said, it's going to be really, really hot here. So we're going to be stuck in air conditioning um, pretty much all weekend. Like, the air temperature, the air temperature on Sunday is going to be 97. Add in the humidity and it's going to be well into the, like, the one teens. That's not good for my husband who has breathing issues. He will be shut in either in his office with the air conditioner on or in his, in the bedroom with the air conditioner on, extra air conditioner on. I mean, we have air conditioner house. It just doesn't keep up. What we did, what are the mistakes that we made? And in hindsight, we shouldn't have done it. When we first purchased this property, we took down all the old trees. Mainly because the storms that come through here, I was afraid that these old, old trees were going to fall on the house. They were so close to the house. They were so old. One of them in the backyard was so infested with bugs. I'm like, it is too close to the house. I don't want bugs in my house. So we had a tree company come in and cut down most of the trees. Well, this house isn't meant to be in direct sun in Florida in, you know, July and August when it's 100 degrees outside. It The air conditioner just doesn't keep up. So we had contemplated putting in a new air conditioning system, but we just put room air conditioners in the rooms that we spend more time in it was more cost effective um so yeah we're paying for that but it we've we've we find workarounds around it so we're we're capable of handling the heat just lock ourselves in our bedroom with our tv and our ensuite bathroom and you know what are you gonna do you know there used to be a time when we lived in indiana we would lock ourselves in our bedroom and turn on the heater because it was too cold outside. Now we're, you know, reverse in Florida, we lock ourselves in a bedroom with the air conditioner 
and you know and and stay comfortable that way so you, you know what you just gotta do what you gotta do right so if you guys have been here through this whole video um i'm doing a a rehoming a quiet rehoming i am not announcing this and it's not that big but i just wanted to say thank you to all of you who do stick around for the whole video, who comment and who hit that thumbs up button, um, who have been around for a while, and even some of you new people, I really do appreciate you. So for today's video, um, if you make a comment and hit the thumbs up, I'm going to send one lucky person and I'll draw the winner next Friday, so for the week, this video will be up all week. I'm going to send you this little project bag that says Peace, Love, and Crochet. A flip flop stitch marker, one of these kind that if you knit, you can put it over your knitting needle, or if you are a crocheter, you can stick it in there. It's really lightweight, so it makes a good stitch marker or a progress keeper and this cute little button pin that says yarn snob so if you have stuck around through this whole thing leave me a comment uh do not use the g word we're not going to do that if i see that word i have to delete it because i don't want trolls but my way of saying Thank you for supporting my channel. Thank you for sticking it out, uh, watching the whole video, hitting the thumbs up, and for uh, making a comment. So with that, you guys, I'm going to let you go. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Remember, take care of yourself and give yourself some grace. But above all, be kind to everyone, and we'll see you on Monday. Have a great weekend.